Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about implicit functions, which uh, we're slowly rounding out 1.5 here. 1.4 and 1.5 kind of run together a little bit, so let's take a look at this guy. Some of the vocab we'll have today, just implicit functions and relation. Remember, relation is something that relates x and y, like y equals x squared is a relation. It also happens to be a function, but anything with x's and y's that has certain points that work and certain points that don't, that's a relation. So. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of work on inverse functions here. So if you want to try these on your own, you can pause the video. Um, I'm going to run through them now. So let's take a look at what we've got going on. So does f of x equals root x minus 3 have an inverse that is a function? So for that, we have to think about whether the function is 1 to 1. So we're going to look at root x minus 3. That's the root function shifted right 3, right there. So this passes vertical line test and horizontal line test. So it is a function itself, and it also has an inverse that is a function. You think about rotating over the line y equals x. 3, 0 is going to translate to 0, 3, right there. And I think it's going to end up being some kind of a parabola, because to undo a square root function, I think you have to do a parabola. So let's find it. So we're going to change the f of x to a y. So we have y equals root x minus 3. Switch the x and y. So we have x equals root y minus 3. Let me solve for y. So square both sides. x squared equals y minus 3. And then add 3. y equals x squared plus 3. Now notice in our picture, it's only half of the parabola. So our domain for that is going to be whatever the range was of our original function, which is bracket 0 infinity. And the range is just th uh, 3, excuse me, 3 to infinity, which was our original domain. Right? You can see from the graph. That's an infinity, I promise. There we go. Uh, next up, inverses, yes or no, let's prove or disprove it. So remember to do that, we have to do f of g of x, and we also have to do g of f of x. In this case, f of g of x would be 3 times, put this whole thing inside, x plus 6 over 3, and then it would be minus 6. So the 3's cancel, plus 6, minus 6, those cancel, that is indeed x, so it works out. g of f of x, that would be uh, 3x minus 6 is taking place this little x up here. So then plus 6 divided by 3, the negative 6 plus 6 cancel. And then I have 3x over 3, which is indeed x. So yes, this first one, they are inverses because when we compose it either way, they undo each other. All right, let's take a look at 2. So we got root x plus 4 and x minus 4 squared. So they kind of look like they might be inverse functions because we got like addition, subtraction, we have root and square. Let's see. So I do f of g of x f of g of x would be the square root of x minus 4 squared plus 4. Hmm, that looks problematic right away because this x minus 4 is in the parentheses and I square it, then I add the 4. This is not going to end up giving me just x squared, right? This would have like x squared minus 8x, it would be, uh, plus 16, and then plus 4 underneath a root. That is not x, right? So 2 is definitely not inverse functions. 3, we got f of x as e to the x and g of x is ln, so let's do f of g of x. So f of g of x would be e to the power ln of x. So remember, basically, if we set this equal to y, I want to show that y is equal to x. So I want to show that this ended up being x. I'm going to undo the log here. So I'm going to write this in log form. So I have ln x equals ln of y. And those arguments then have to be the same because it's the same base on both sides. So that is indeed x. Now if I go the other way, natural log of e to the x, I can move the x to the front. So I have x ln e. ln e is 1, so that's x. Cool. All right, next up, if f of negative 2 is 3, what point is on the inverse, f inverse of x? So if f of negative 2 is 3, that means the point negative 2, 3 is on f. So that means on the inverse, we're going to have 3, negative 2. That's all there is to it. Not too bad. All right. Let's take a look at these. So relations. The question is, are they functions? And what are three points on each relation? So x squared plus y squared equals 25. Hopefully we recognize this as a circle with radius 5. Circle with radius 5. Oop, not 4 or 5. OK, so uh, let's find three points on this guy. So uh, one way to do this is just plug in values for x. So if x equals 0, then we'd have 0 plus y squared equals 25. So y would have to be 5. It uh, could also be negative 5. So if x was 0, y could also be negative 5. Interesting. So one un input gives two outputs. So like that tells us it's not a function, right? And if you look at a circle, it doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it makes sense that that's not a function. Uh, let's try another one. Let's do x equals, if x is 5, then y could be 0. Now, you don't have to do these boring points, right? You could do like x equals 2. So now I would have 4 plus y squared equals 25. So y squared is 21. So y could be plus or minus root 21. So the points 2 root 21 and 2 negative root 21 are also on this circle. 
Okay, so not a function, right? And its inverse wouldn't be a function either. Um, but what we want to ask here is just kind of how could I make this out of a couple of different functions, right? So if I had to take two pieces that both pass the vertical line test and put them together to make this circle, that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on today. So I think I actually have this. Uh, well, let's talk about this one first. So this guy, um, once again, has y squareds on the other side with the x's. So it's probably not going to be a function. We're going to graph it in a second. But um, three points. So let's try some values for y. So let's say if y equals 2. So then I would have x squared times 2 plus 4 equals 5. So if we subtract the 4, we have x squared, whoop, not y squared, x squared times 2 uh, equals 1. So x squared is 1 half. So x would be root 1 half, which is root 2 over 2. We don't care about that so much right now. So when y is 2, x is root 1 half. So we have root 1 half comma 2. And that could be plus or minus root 1 half, because when we take the root, we can get plus or minus. So there's two points right there. And then how about if x is 0? If x is 0, then we have y squared equals 5. So y must be root 5. OK, so that gives us another couple points on there. Because we have the plus and minus 1 half, and then we have the y equals. That would be plus and minus root 5. OK, so we have 0 plus and minus root 5. So just a couple uh, points that we have on a relation there. Let's take a look at what this thing actually looks like. I've got it ready to go on Desmos, so bear with me here for a second. I'll keep those. So if I go to our Desmos screen, first one I have is x squared plus y squared equals 25. There is our circle as we predicted, right? We knew that. And uh, the next one, this is the one we just graphed, that we just talked about, x squared y plus y squared equals 5. Interesting. Look at that. Does that pass the vertical line test? Definitely not. It's definitely not a function, right? Uh, but we just found three points that are on it. Right, we found 0, 2 right there. Well, 0, uh, I guess it would be root 5, right? And then we found uh, some other points on there as well. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, but it looks like we could think of this as two separate functions, right? And graph them both. That's kind of what we're going to focus on today is what are called implicitly defined functions. So these, um, uh, 1.5, there we go. So what's going on is these things might contain more than one function. So like a circle, I can think about that in terms of both a positive semicircle and a negative semicircle. So if I think about a circle as like the top half as one function, and then the bottom half as a different function, this is actually um, this is actually going to be two functions basically put together. We're gonna learn how to split those up today. So let's take a look. So it breaks the relation into its implicitly defined functions. All this really means is solve for y. So I'm gonna write that underneath it. Solve for y. Okay. So Excuse me, uh, and you're probably going to get two solutions. So probably more than one solution because if the original thing is not a function, then we're breaking it up into more than one function that can be put together to create this thing. So if we solve this for y, we have y squared equals 25 minus x squared. Square root of both sides, and when we do that, we have to do plus or minus. So plus or minus square root 25 minus x squared because we have to do the the plus or minus because. Um, we take the square root, you get two answers. If y is positive root 25 minus x squared, and we plug it in here, we get 25 minus x squared. If y is negative, that square takes away that negative sign. So if we go back to our Desmos, and we actually uh, graph this thing, and see what that would look like. So if I graph my two, uh, let's see here, come on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to graph my two uh, semicircles. And my pen is having some issues here, but we'll see if I can do it. So I'm going to graph my two semicircles. I'm going to see if this is what I get. So we're going to graph uh, the square root of 25 minus x squared minus x squared. That was square. There we go. All right, and there's the top half of our circle. You can see it in black. And if I do the negative, that should give me the bottom. And there it is. Okay, So what you see is if you compose those two functions together, not really composition, but if you graph them both at the same time, you're going to end up with your circle. That's kind of the point of this whole idea of breaking things into their uh, implicit functions. All right, let's try one that's a little harder. Mm -hmm. All right, so for this one, we got x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 1. Now, at first glance, you might not have any idea where to start with this one, because trying to solve this for y is weird, because there's two different y's, right? If we have two different y's, it's like, well, how the heck do I solve for y? Well, let's take a look at it and see if we can figure it out. So this looks like it might want to be factored. How do we make x squared? x and x? 
Now you might say, well, they're two variables. That's hard. But check out the last thing. It's y squared. What's the only way to make y squared? y times y. Everything's positive, so it's got to be positive. And positive equals 1. Now I'm going to rewrite this as x plus y squared equals 1. Now I take the square root, and that's going to give me the plus or minus. So x plus y is plus or minus 1. So if we subtract x from both sides, we get y equals plus or minus 1 minus x. This is two lines. The slopes are ne positive 1 or negative 1. Uh, sorry, the slope is negative 1 for both of them. And then we have different y-intercepts. So this is two lines. Interesting. Looking at that original equation, I would not think this would be two lines, right? I would look at this and be like, it looks like it's going to be like a parabola or some kind of a curve, but it ends up turning out to be um, negative x plus 1 and negative x minus 1. And so, uh, oop, yes, that's right. So they both have a slope of negative 1, and they have different y-intercepts. Well, what does that mean? That means we have two parallel lines. Let's take a look at it. So if we graph this here... This guy. No, no, no. This guy. Check it out. Two parallel lines, just like we predicted. Interesting. It's kind of cool that you can end up with two parallel lines by having a squared function in terms of x and y. So implicitly, two functions, right? Negative x plus 1 and negative x minus 1. Kind of cool. All right. So you got one more here. This one's a little bit different. We got x minus absolute y equals 1. So once again, I'm going to try to solve for y. So I have absolute uh, y, let's do negative, equals 1 minus x. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So I have absolute y equals x minus 1. Right? I just negative multiply by negative 1, and I distribute it into both of those. So uh, this guy, remember, absolute value does different things depending on if the result or the, what you're plugging in is positive or negative. So this is going to be doing something different on the top half of the y-axis and the bottom half of the y-axis. So if you remember, the first step to solving an uh, absolute value problem was to isolate the absolute. We just did that. And then you say it could be positive or negative. So it could be that y is x minus 1, or it could be that y is negative parentheses x minus 1. Those are our two implicitly defined functions. You could clean it up y equals x minus 1 and y equals negative x plus 1. And so that means actually that they come together at the same point, at 1 to the right. Let's take a look at the graph and see if that's true. All right, I got our last one right here. ABS is used for absolute value. Oop. And there it is. So we see above the y-axis it behaves one way and below, sorry, the x-axis. And below the x-axis it behaves a different way. Kind of cool. Not too tough. So that's really it for implicitly defined functions. Uh, give the homework problems a shot, and I will see you in the next video. Love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have a great day.